Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joshua Aura. I teach advanced financial management at RCM, early morning classes and evening classes. Now today, I would want us to go through this concept of indifference levels in uh, financing decision topic of AFM. Specifically, the question that was tested last semester is the one that I would want us to go through. Now, most importantly, what we're supposed to know is that uh, the point of indifference is a point at which you can't be able to decide between two options because they have got equal earnings. I.e., at the point of indifference, i.e., at the point uh, of indifference, at the point of indifference, EPS for option one will be equal to EPS will be equal to EPS for option two. So point of indifference is that point of dilemma where you will not be able to choose between options because they are equally profitable because they have got the same earnings per share. So for us to understand what I'm talking about, please let us go through this particular question fairly fast. We are told November 2017, question number four, that two CPA graduates have formed a company to write, market and distribute textbooks and revision manuals. The company's textbooks and revision manuals have already been piloted and the market prospects are good. All that is lacking is adequate financing to continue the project. A small group of private investors is, uh, is interested in financing the new company. Two financing proposals are being evaluated. Financing option one. This is an all equity capital structure. It's an all equity capital structure. Three million shillings would be raised by selling ordinary shares at 40 per share. Please look at what I will do here. Now, for this particular option, it will be very important for us to note that uh, there is no debt. Why? Because we've been told that the firm is all equity financed. If that is the case, then look at what I will do for us to be able to get EPS of option one. Remember, generally, EPS equals total earnings divided by number of shares. These total earnings, of course, are the earnings which are attributable to ordinary shareholders. That is profit after tax. And for us to get profit after tax, we normally take EBIT minus interest, which in this question, option we don't have less tax which is the same as multiplying this with one minus t come and divide this by number of ordinary shares for you to be able to get earnings per share earnings per share now what have we said we've said that option one the firm will be all equity financed no debt meaning that interest will be equal to zero right the examiner has given us tax of 0 0.3 meaning that 1 minus t will be 1 minus 0.3 which will be equal to 0 0.7 the other very important thing that we have to calculate straight away are the number of ordinary shares number of ordinary shares how do we get this number of ordinary shares very easy you simply look at uh, the amount which will be raised through this equity element. Amount to be raised divided by the price per share. We are told that the amount which is required by this publishing firm is 3 million. So this will be 3 million. You divide by price per share. And the price per share is what year? Is 40. 3 million divided by 40. The price per share being told there is 40. So 3 million divided by 40, which gives at the end of the day 75,000 shares. Now, meaning that uh, our EPS for option one will be equal to EBIT, which we don't have, minus interest, which is zero. This is an all equity financed firm. Multiply this by 1 minus t, which is 0 0.7. Divide this by the number of ordinary shares, which we have found out here to be 75,000. So we simplify this. My EPS1 will be equal to EBIT 
multiplied by 0 0.7 divided by 75,000. Meaning that uh, my EPS1 will be equal to 0 0.7 a bit divided by 75,000. If you wish, you can simplify this further, but it will be better off just leaving it at that stage. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, at the point of indifference, we do not know the EPS nor EBIT. The two will remain as our unknown parameters. Now, from there, we go to analyze the second option. Option two. Option two. Option two. Now, option two, most importantly for us to be able to get EPS, we simply need to know the capital structure. The moment we know the capital structure, that is it. Look at option number two. I hope you are able to see your question there. Option two, financing option two. This will involve the use of financial leverage. So that will be there. One million shillings would be raised by selling corporate bond. So for option two, we have debt of one million. Debt of one million with an effective interest rate of 14%. So the interest has been given here, the rate is 14%, 14% of 1 million. 14% of 1 million gives me shillings 140,000. Don't forget that in total, the publishing house needs 3 million to be able to finance its operations, of which 1 million is coming from debt, the other 2 million is from equity, Look at the question. We are told the remaining shillings, 2 million, will be raised by selling ordinary shares at 40. So very importantly, if you are going to raise this money by giving out shares, simply tell us how many shares are we going to be able to use to get that amount. So come and give us here a number of ordinary shares. And for us to be able to get number of ordinary shares, I told you, you simply look at the amount to be fetched by this instrument. This time round, we are fetching 2 million shillings. We divide this by 40, the price per share. You look at the amount coming in, divided by the price per share. So 2 million divided by 40, 2 million divided by 40. So if that happens, then you are going to issue 50 million. You're going to issue 50,000 shares, sorry, 50,000 shares. 50,000 shares. 50,000 shares. Now, having gotten those parameters, it will be very important for us to go back to our EPS formula. Our EPS formula. So for us to be able to get uh, this particular point of indifference, we've said that at the point of indifference, EPS1 will always be equal to EPS2. Now we are trying to ascertain EPS2. We are trying to ascertain EPS2. And for us to get EPS2, we are taking here, remember the formula is quite easy. You look at the earnings which are attributable to ordinary shareholders. First, get EBIT. From EBIT, pay the debt holders. Give them interest. After you give them interest, then you will get what we call profit before taxation. Go ahead and share with the taxman first. So give the taxman what will be left out to these ordinary shareholders will be the profit after tax, which will be this multiplied by 1 minus T, divide this by number of what year? Ordinary shares. Number of ordinary shares. Aha, remember what we said, ladies and gentlemen, we do not know EBIT, we do not know EPS in point of indifference calculations we don't know those parameters so a bit will remain but fortunately we have the interest payable for option two of how much year of 140,000 into one minus t the tax rate is not changing we are still working with a 0 0.7 we are still working with 0 0.7 one minus t we got that one as 0 0.7 divide this by the number of ordinary shares number of ordinary shares for option two that we have to raise for us, we have to issue for us to raise that amount were 50,000. So please come and simplify this. Our EPS2 will be equal to EBIT multiplied by 0 0.7. So that straight away gives me 0 0.7 EBIT minus 140,000 times 0 0.7. So 140,000 140, times 0 0.7, that gives us 98,000. 
divide this by 50,000. Because if you wish, you can use distributive law to distribute this to each of these. But that to me is basically a format or other step which is meaningless. So to me, after getting this, I will remember what the examiner wants us to get. The examiner wanted us to define the points of the indifference. And at the point of indifference, we've just learned with you today that at the point of indifference, EPS1 should be equal to EPS2. I want again to restate that in writing. That at the point of indifference, at the point of indifference, at the point of indifference, EPS1 equals EPS what? Two like that. So what do we need to do? We simply need to take the EPS as equations between the two options and equate them. So we have EPS1 clearly displayed there. It is 0.7 EBIT. Divide this by 75,000 equals EPS2. EPS2 which is here. 0 0.7 EBIT minus 98,000 divide this by 50,000 divide this by 50,000 now from there what do we do we shall cross multiply we cross multiply cross multiply we cross multiply So as we do this, don't forget that Regional Center of Management is a training institution and as well as a publishing house. We publish study texts and revision kits. We publish study tests, texts, uh, text and revision kits for CPA students. So these books retail, like the revision kits retail at 1100 from all reliable bookshops in the country. Any good bookshop in the country, name them Savannis, go to Eldoret, any good bookshop you know must be having our books. So you should be able to work with us by going through these books because most of the videos that you shall be releasing, like the one we're releasing here, we normally get questions from these textbooks and the study or other revision kits like that. Very, very important. Now let us get back to the question here. Getting back to the question, we are saying we want to cross multiply. If we cross multiply, then these will be, so cross multiplication, this will be 0 0.7 EBIT multiplied by 50,000, which will be equal to 75,000 multiplied by, you can see this has got two terms, right? So we put them in brackets. So we have 0.7 EBIT minus 98,000. Now from there, what we need to do is to get our calculators and evaluate our multiples. So we have here 0 0.7 times 50,000, giving us 35,000 EBIT. 35,000 EBIT equals, please distribute this 75,000 inside there. So 75,000 times 0 0.7 gives us 52 500 EBIT minus 75,000 quite huge times 98,000 which gives us 7.35 billion 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 now from there what do we do we shall take this particular value to this other side we put like terms together so putting like terms together, take this to the other side. So we shall talk of 35,000 minus 52,500 equals, I'm getting minus 17,500 EBIT, which will be equal to minus 7.35 billion. So I want to be left with EBIT alone. We make EBIT the subject of the formula. So if you make EBIT the subject of the formula, then this will be minus 7.35 billion divided by minus once or rather 17,500 like that. Of course, the negatives will cancel out leaving us with a positive answer. So then at the end of the day, what shall we be talking about? We shall be talking of 7.35 billion, that is exponential 9. Divide this by 17,500. So you'll be able to see that the EBIT 
which is required for us to be indifferent between the two options is shillings 420,000. Shillings 420,000. It is 420,000. Now, after you get a bit, of course, there are two requirements. There, they wanted us to give them a bit and EPS at the point of indifference. For us to be able to get the EPS, we simply need to plug in this a bit figure in any of the two equations. We can decide in this case here to use option one EPS formula. The option one EPS formula was 0 0.7 a bit divided by 75,000. And then we happen to be having our EPS1 here at 0 0.7 times the EBIT at the point of indifference, which is 420,000, divide this by 75,000. So then this at the end of the day will be equal to what? So we have here 0.7 times 420,000 divided by 75,000, which will end up giving us shillings 3.92. Shillings 3.92. And that is what you are required to do for you to be able to earn those marks. It was a fairly straightforward question but so many students struggled really with this for you to be able to enjoy such videos you need to sign up with us we have a website where we have uh, stored all these good videos which cover the entire syllabus and we are selling these videos at 2100 per subject and then for those of you who are uh, in Nairobi you can simply join our classes at RCM at RCM, we have early morning classes, we have day classes, we have evening classes, late evening classes, weekend only classes. Really, you are spoiled for options. Now, if you want these online classes and you are not able to get our website, please get in touch with us on the number at the screen, which is basically 0719-525,000. Otherwise, it was uh, good to have you around. I hope you've enjoyed. Please share our videos.